Just look at the size of this place. 23,000, 23 and a half thousand holes. I would say there are about 16, 17,000 in here. The night crowds have been much the better. So just making a couple of gestures there. I think he's having a bit of trouble with the swirling breeze. The breeze at this stage is just coming from behind his back, so maybe the ball is being held up. Not really coming onto his racket. $40. Well, you could just freeze slow-mo this backhand volley and put it on an instructional video. That is absolutely perfect. Oh. Well, to uh, serve out a love game like that and play so incisively and with such complete freedom. Uh, is further testimony, I think, to this uh, man's in uh, Henman's innate temperament. It's in his genes, you know. His grandfather played at Wilmington, played Davis Cup. I slightly before my time, Wally, but I'm Five told minutes. that this is a curious thing. He was extremely unorthodox. Zero, Edmund. Hi, please. Good service. Tenth ace of the match. Two hundred and eighteen miles an hour. Below his quickest. Today at least. 125 fastest today. Well, it was a little bit of a bluff coming in off that backhand. He really was almost hesitant. Scooped up that low ball. But sometimes that's what a tiebreak is about. Him and just slowing Worcester down now. Didn't work that time, but he's never let Worcester settle. Three, two. As soon as he spotted a a worthwhile chance to chip and come in or run him out of position and then come in. He's done it all the time. Muster just likes to stand there and put his two feet down heavily and slog. And Henman won't let him do it. Well, Muster tried three lobs in that passage of play, and he did have the wind at his back. It was almost impossible to get that ball to come up and down in such a short time with the wind at his back. 
So tactically not a good tiebreaker from Worcester. Henman continuing to do all the right things, not changing a winning game. Worcester had said that uh, the balls here fluff up quite quickly after two or three games, and uh, that one would assume, if it was true, it would be in his favour. Slower ball. 4-2. Still got this beautiful rhythm. The number of first serves he's been getting in. Right from the start, he's had Five that rhythm in his serve. Two. Again, it was a bit of a bluff, certainly it was gamble, but it paid off. Six, three. And it gives uh, Henman three chances to take a lead and two sets to love. Uh, the crowd trying to lift Muster or trying to encourage the uh, young Englishman. First serve in again. And it's been like that right from the start. And he's already done better, really, than I thought he would. It's a superb performance, really is. And uh, it's just so exciting to be a British commentator watching a young British player play like this. Well, Jerry, that uh, you've mentioned it. It's that serve. The uh, it's really the platform that he's building this uh, this victory upon. Or so far. He's basically, when he gets his first serve in, he's up around 70 or 80 percent points one, and he's just serving terribly accurately. That last point right into the Muster body, but uh, really has played very well, and I like the way that he's taken the pace off the ball too. He hasn't tried to slog it out with Muster when he is involved with baseline rallies. He's almost taken a lot of the pace off and made Muster do all the hard work generating the pace. I was wondering what that is. <laughs> It's a shot from the old centre court where incidentally last year and played and lost to Edberg eventually in the last 16. And uh, that's Venus Williams, who else could it be with the hair do, signing the autographs after her match? You have to presume she won the fact that she's signing autographs, I guess. Tennis in a state of uh, acute anxiety about the future, but uh, she's uh, certainly one of the best young prospects. There seems to be a problem here, so I'll try and remember what it was like to do sound commentary for all those years ago. He's like a storm just about to happen. Panic over. 15. Still the rhythm on the serve. Must be a beautiful feeling. And the crispness on the volley. And the immovable spirit. No panic, no excitement. And he's at the net. Henman going great guns here. Two sets to love and one love. Love. 
Fifteen-off. Well, it's one thing to have a game plan. It's another thing to execute. And Tim Henman in what is pretty difficult conditions down there is doing it perfectly. Stuff. And uh, I thought it was significant that Musta, who might have come in about two shots before that, didn't come in. Well, that was pretty cheeky from uh, 15, 14. Tim Henman there. Musta had a uh, bounce smash. Henman had crept into the net. I think Musta would have got quite a surprise to see him there. Brings up two break points. Juice. Very impassive, Tim Henman. He's just had two break points, two errors. Doesn't show much. Muster. Ah! And Muster. Well, he had to win that uh, service game, did Muster, to have uh, gone a breakdown, having already gone two sets down, would have been calamitous for him. Just noticing on a couple of the big points now, those break points that he faced, must have going to the forehand of Henman. I think he believes that Henman approaches a little better off the backhand side. I still think Mustard is trying to hit that return a bit hard. That was actually a shank. That ball had rolled around the frame a couple of times. Oh. He might be advised at this point, Henman is serving so well. Mustard just to move up to the baseline and maybe try to push a few back, block a few back with a shorter swing. He really is taking a big cut at the ball. Rather like uh, one of the senior boys giving the new kid uh, a whop just to put him in his place. And again. 
This is Muster imposing himself suddenly. 15 40. 30 aces 30 aces from Hemen. That one timed at 122 miles an hour. Just below his fastest. 30 miles an hour. That's only the second time in the match so far that Must has broken his serve. Well, Must is probably starting to read this two serve. 2-1 two one Must have leads. Wings, and that ball just in the block hole. Didn't quite get it into the body, didn't quite get it away. Right in the hitting zone. You can just see there that little bit of forward momentum on the return, always important. So the world's watching, and... Uh, in case you wonder what that is, it's just outside. It's part of the of the development here. Uh, Molly Mazur is trying to point to a place bottom right hand side on that globe. Just trying to point point uh, Canberra out to you there, Jerry. All right, okay. Part of the the grounds here, of the Flushing Meadows. There was a World Fair here, and uh, they very artistically woven this into the general development as it's uh, progressed, particularly in the in this new uh, centre court here. Yeah, there's a real symmetry to the stadium yes. and the surrounds now. Yes. Before it just seemed like a real mishmash of courts and, and buildings. Two sets up, Henman. Muster serving two under the break in the third. Well, Henman may be just a little bit casual there. It was a good reply from Muster taken so far out of court. Good touch. Henman had a lot of time. He was going over the high part of the net. Continues to be a model of positive thinking, Henman. Well, it didn't work for him that time, but that's what he's done so well today. A lot of players are so afraid of the Muster forehand, they attack his backhand relentlessly. Muster ends up parking himself in that backhand corner and hitting forehands anyway. But Henman is really open to court up by going to the Muster forehand. And then when he gets the short reply, he's got a large area to come in on the backhand. And uh, what uh, distracted Muster there, I'm quite sure, was because Henman suddenly chipped the return and came in behind it, and Muster looks up and suddenly there's something that could take, take his eye off the ball. Muster leads 3-1, and uh, if Henman, being human, is going to have a slight dip in morale, it's uh, going to be at about this place in a long match, which this uh, could well yet turn out to be. You move from one plateau to another. Yeah, it's one of the difficult things about playing best of five set tennis. It's almost impossible to concentrate for the duration.
15 long. seconds. Forty down. Still uh, arrowing that uh, serve beautifully deep near the sidelines. I detect no uh, hint of self-doubt in those breakdowns. Oh, that's the most beautifully crisp volley you can imagine. And that uh, slightly closes the gap to 3-2 in the third set. Muster in the lead with a break, but Henman leading by two sets. Still leads by three games to two. Henman just standing his ground there on the volley. Really does have good hands. And one thing about the Henman volley, he volleys so far out in front of his body, which is so important. When you see him play shots like that, the forehand and the volley, you know, no backswing. And it is extraordinary when I, when I uh, was saying earlier on, at least it's extraordinary to me, that apparently his grandfather was so unorthodox because this is purity of technique, isn't it? Yes, Tim Henman has, has always reminded me a little bit of Stefan Edberg. Time. Just in movement, preparation on the backhand side and the volley. Must a break up in three two. In a profitable ploy that by Henman, he's tried it again and again. Chipping in. Lot fifteen. That concludes our coverage on Sky Sports 3 for the moment. You won't miss anything. Do turn over to Sky Sports in the third set against Thomas Muster. He's two sets to love up and check this out. <laughs> Muster's after him. He's had enough. <laughs> and don't tangle with Thomas, the Iron Man. 15.30 down, but they're having fun out there. This one could have a long way to run. Wally Mazur and Jerry Williams are your commentators. 15-30, Muster with the break in the third set. Henman, two sets to level up. 30 all. Oh. 40-30. Point uh, for Muster to take a lead of 4-2. Muster. Muster four games to two. And 4 2 it is. So uh, that uh, marvellous bit of fun just now revealed a side to Muster that the crowd seldom see. But in fact, he can be uh, a man of great generosity. He said to me when we first got here, before the tournament had even begun, he said things about uh, Henman and his talent that were very generous. He said he just hoped that he wouldn't be too good when he played him. Well, he has been good so far. I must say, this is, a, is as nice as I've seen Thomas on a tennis 15. court. Normally, he's a, a little bit more antagonistic. <laughs> well, he tries to intimidate all the time, doesn't he? It's, it's part of his uh, personality. Henman did the right thing running up the alleyway, though. You don't want to mess with him.
59. I remember one year, year here at the US Open, there was quite a lot of controversy. Thomas Muster put a, a sitter right through Yannick Noah and then proceeded to run his finger across his throat. And Noah did not appreciate it. Charming thing to do. Well, uh, we've got some new viewers, we're told, from London on Sky Sports 1, and uh, we bring you good news, which you can see here. Tim Henman has been playing from the very first point quite beautifully, wonderfully incisively. He's got a superb rhythm on his serve. He's two sets up, but a breakdown here. Break down, 2-4 down, 30-15 up on his serve. M. Handman. Good serving again. Felix, Quick. Three. Well placed. Lovely rhythm. He's never lost the rhythm. 4 3. Yes, I like that. The fact that Tim hasn't been deterred from his game plan by anything today. He's been broken a couple of times, hasn't panicked. I thought at Wimbledon uh, against Michael Stick and on a few other matches, he just tried to serve too hard. And it's a given fact, Tim Henman's fastest serve today is 125 miles an hour. It's very hard for him to generate much more pace than that, and he shouldn't try to. He works hard for his power in any case, but uh, today, as you said, a beautiful rhythm on his serve, and he's varied the pace and the direction well. Just get to watch this point in replay. Good court coverage from Muster. Continues chasing Henman out of the stadium. Good bit of by play. Yes, without a doubt, this uh, has been th this moment has been the best moment so far uh, for entertainment value in the whole of this year's United States Open. And those pictures are going to be shown all around the world, time and time again. I'll bet you. <laughs> uh, terrific. Muster uh, still with a break here. Two sets down, but 4 3 up and serving. Well, Muster was wrong-footed by a long way there, and it was because Henman had held the ball for so long, just holding the racket face open at the last minute, rolling it cross-court. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's just long. 40-15. I think you can tell from some of the spectators' reaction to this that uh, Henman's won a lot of friends here, a lot of admirers. Another point for five three. Well, it's been a brave tactic, but Tim really has given Thomas no pace all day long. He has chipped and floated the backhand, rolled the forehand, and Mr. is essentially a counterpuncher. Back here. Well, that was one of the very few poor shots he played in the whole match. It wasn't really uh, decisive at all. Yes, maybe just being a little, we'll have a look at the unforced errors there. Not too much difference. Big difference in the winners, though. Yes, I guess if there is a time when you do have to be positive and attack, it's on break point. Gotta make your own luck. Three he leads, uh, but that was a close call, both on that uh, point and also Mr. Leeds five games in that three. game. Now, of course, Muster's an old hand at stuff like this. Big crowds, Grand Slam championships, big stadium, big atmosphere. But Henman, as he did there, continues to play this as if he'd just strolled out into the park, play a friendly match against Pell. Apparently experiencing no pressure at all. I find it quite remarkable. Well, must have just known for his great court coverage, just imploring Henman to hit it back to him here. 40 minutes. Another good, outstanding service came by Hedman. And Muster leads 5-4. Hedman leads two sets to love. It's uh, inborn in a player, isn't it? The ability to, uh, in front of a huge crowd and world television audience, to play with such freedom, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely one of the things about playing tennis. When you do walk out onto a court, you take out a lot of uh, emotional baggage out there with you. Your personality, you can never escape it. Some players don't like crowds, they don't like pressure. 
There are some players that just thrive on it. Thomas Muster is one of them. There are some guys out there on tour that you just could not beat in practice. Put them in a match situation and they don't fire up. There was that point, Muster begging the ball to come back to him. Well, uh, he's come out right from the start as Henman, and he's played with the uh, freshness. Clear, he's been clear-sighted and uh, on a wave of inspiration. But uh, now, perhaps, we're down to the real nitty-gritty. This is uh, more like two fighters are going to have to slug it out, and Must is wonderful at this stuff. Grabbed a few laughs along the way. He wasn't going to let Henman... Uh, have everyone on his side, and he succeeded in that respect, serving to the set here. Well, Musta's taken quite a bit off his serve at the moment. There's one thing, when the ball's coming at you slowly, you've really got to move your feet. Come in a little flat-footed on some of these second serves, just reaching for the ball. Been pretty gusty out there. Ground shots generally is still up wonderfully well. But most is onto all this stuff. Well, what delicacy. Well, he backed him nine times out of ten in this situation. Just a lot softer hands, better feel around the net, better anticipation. Five, four, thirty all, third set. Thirty and a set point. This is the third set. Well, he's just telling himself, getting to get his feet moving there, just a bit flat-footed. <laughs> yes, he remembered his lines all right, uh, but. Uh, Muster's passes, I think, have got more and more short. I think he's starting to read some of the angles Six that four. Henman's coming in on. It really is a battle now. 6-4, third set goes to Muster. After Henman has taken the lead of two sets to love. Good match. Crowd loving it. Well, Tim's approaches have just lost a little bit of their authority. In the first couple of sets, he really was pegging lines and moving the ball around. That last set, he was starting to come in a little bit on the bluff. Just poking the ball down the middle and following it in. 15 love. Very important for Tim in a match like this when it gets to the, the closing stages, he has to go out to win the match. Thomas Muster's not going to lose it. It's only the fourth time that he's pulled a double fault in this match, Henman. Serving the highest quality. Oh. 
15 and 30. Uh, Muster is saying he wasn't ready or was distracted by somebody or something. Don't know what it was, neither the umpire. The point stands. the fourth set uh, by holding his serve yet again in spite of uh, in that uh, game most game out of seven. character serving two double faults what's Muster complaining about there was well something, something in the crowd a shout or something that the ace that uh, Tim served during that game Muster was suggesting that he had his arms raised for the Point to be replayed, but I don't think that was the case. I think he was pretty much facing Tim at the time. Just have a look at the summary of set three. First serve percentage, Tim reasonably good at 56%, only one double fault. But you just see the uh, the Henman unforced errors at 17. Obviously, he, he will hit more winners and make more unforced errors than Muster as he is making the play, but uh, maybe just a fraction too many. That was a great half volley. Let's watch Thomas Wooster's footwork in slow motion. One of the best movers in the game, along with Chang and Jim Courier, in my opinion. Henman, two sets to one, having been two sets to love up. Wooster serving, love one. Just showing that uh, Henman's not the only one who can play the fanciful shots around the net. 15 all. Well, Muster's not noted for his touch, particularly at the net. He's played a couple of beauties today. Feeling Tim's got to lift a little bit now. The momentum really shifted. Uh, of course, uh, you can't surf the waves of inspiration all the time. They're going to get 
little moments when suddenly things are not happening exactly the way you want it, when you can't play by instinct. Henman played most of this match, it seemed to me, by instinct, and it's just been flowing. So this is a time for grown-up stuff, perhaps, for him for a bit. 15 long. Yeah, it's always very important at the beginning of a, a fourth set, two sets to one up, if he can just get that early break, it's an enormous lead to have. 30 long. Sometimes you've just got to tell yourself to make it happen. Reinforce a lot of positive ideas, go over your game plan in your head. But just judging by that shot, I think the wind is a little more gusty out there than we think. That ball moved a good three or four feet in the air, even though it was mishit. Just for a moment, it bothered him. Hammond's come through that. He leads 2 1 and two sets to one. And uh, there's a, a thin veil of cloud and leads by two games to one. at the moment, uh, shielding the sun. There was at the start of the day some talk of rain later on, but I don't think it's going to interrupt this match. Muster on this occasion. Him and it volleyed very deep down the centre of the court. No angle for Muster. He really did try to rip it back through Tim. It's very natural the way he follows in a serve. Isn't it? You can't teach somebody to do that. Remember how Lendl used to try? And uh, all, all he was doing really, he'd do the serve, and then he'd sort of stop, and then make a second movement. I guess the good thing about Tim's serve is he, he has quite a deep knee bend. He rocks nicely on his serve onto the back foot big deep knee bend and he really does launch himself up and into the ball and uh, a lot like Stefan Edberg in that respect and it really does throw him into the court and uh, he is a good mover in any case but what I really like about Tim is the way he sets up for that first volley he's always looking for the ball the racket's way out in front of the body one of the best parts of his game one two full set Well, that's good. You see Henman just skipping across the court. Now's the time. He's got to seize his chances here. He's at the good end. He's got the wind coming over his left shoulder. Fifteen off. Approach was short. Muster. Well, that's uh, a decisive service game two by Muster. Two games all, fourth set. Henman leading by two sets to one, having led by two sets to love. And it's uh, rather harder work, I think, for Henman now. And a test of other qualities, perhaps. Oh, 
that will do him good because uh, the serve, he, he got the rhythm back again. There have been a couple of double faults uh, 15 off. from him and another one there. Just see on that first volley how close his eyes were to the racket head. The closer you can keep those two things together, the more consistent you'll be on the volley. Probably 15. What a wonderfully sure touch. It's almost never less left 50. him. You can't think of three or four volleys really in this match, I can't at least, where he suddenly dithered or not be quite sure. He's been close into the net. Oh. He's starting to uh, just question one or two calls. Bruno Rebure, the Frenchman there. One of the top arm powers in the world, he's having none of that. Forty thirty. I think thought that ball was going to go out and he had to adjust at the very last minute. Did well there, Henman, to win that game because uh, after that to call, he thought he'd had a bad call on the serve and it could have bothered him. Well, he showed me by taking that smash on the full that he's pretty confident that ball was coming down from a great height. And that's always difficult to do. You'll see most players opt to let that one bounce. Good sign of confidence. There it is in replay. And a rare show of emotion. Um, do you see a technical weakness in him? I can't say I ever have done. Well, to my way of thinking, he probably just is a little bit light. His game is a little bit light to ever really threaten the top levels of the game. If you look at Sampras, he has all the touch, the movement and he combines it with some awesome power. I, I haven't quite seen that yet in Tim, not on the serve and not on the ground shots. He, uh, he's a very, uh, very neat player, but probably just lacks that real uh, ferocity off the ground or off the serve, for example, so that when he is having a day where not everything's going right, he can fall back on those weapons. harsh comparison comparing him with Sampras who may be the best player we've ever seen. But Sampras himself was telling me he sees a lot of uh, his own uh, characteristics two or three years ago when he watches him and play. Probably 15. 
a lot of people told me when Henman was starting out that he he he's a, he was like Sampras. I've always seen him more of an Edberg. 40-15. Yeah, Sampras himself sees him like Edberg. I see him like Sampras. Not bad players to be compared with, are they? Just look at the size of this place. 23,000, 23 and a half thousand holes. I would say there are about 16, 17,000 in here. The night crowds have been much the better. So just making a couple of gestures there. I think he's having a bit of trouble with the swirling breeze. The breeze at this stage is just coming from behind his back, so maybe the ball is being held up. Not really coming onto his racket. $40. Well, you could just freeze slow-mo this backhand volley and put it on an instructional video. That is absolutely perfect. Oh. Well, to uh, serve out a love game like that and play so incisively and with such complete freedom. Uh, is further testimony, I think, to this uh, man's in uh, innate temperament. It's in his genes, you know, his grandfather. Well, again, it was a bit of a bluff, certainly it was a gamble, but it paid off. Six, three. And it gives uh, Henman three chances to take a lead of two sets to love. Now, the crowd trying to lift Muster or trying to encourage the uh, young Englishman. First serve in again, and it's been like that right from the start, and he's already done better, really, than I thought he would. It's a superb performance, really is. And uh, it's just so exciting to be a British commentator watching a young British player play like this. Well, Jerry, that, uh, you've mentioned it. It's that serve. The, uh, it's really the platform that he's building this, uh, this victory upon all so far. He's basically, when he gets his first serve in, he's up around 70 or 80 percent points won, and he's just serving terribly accurately. That last point right into the Muster body, but uh, really has played very well, and I like the way that he's taken the pace off the ball too. He hasn't tried to slog it out with Muster when he is involved in baseline rallies. He's almost taken a lot of the pace off and made Muster do all the hard work generating the pace. I was wondering what that is. <laughs> It's a shot from the old centre court where incidentally last year um, played and lost to Edberg eventually in the last 16 and uh, that's Venus Williams who else could it be with the hair do signing a little bit of the hair match. You have to presume she won the fact that she signed a lot of graphs, I guess. Tennis in a state of uh, acute anxiety about the future, but uh, she's uh, certainly one of the best young prospects. Oh, 
Mikey and the ball boys. Played at Wimbledon, played Davis Cup. I slightly before my time, Wally, but I'm Five told feet. that this is a curious thing. He was extremely unorthodox. One zero, Henman. Hi, please. The service. Tenth ace of the match. Two amazing miles an hour. Below his quickest today, at least 125 fastest today. Well, it was a little bit of a bluff coming in off that backhand. He really was almost hesitant. Scooped up that low ball. But sometimes that's what a tiebreak is about. Him and just slowing Worcester down now. Didn't work that time, but he's never let Muster settle. Three, two. As soon as he spotted a a worthwhile chance to chip and come in or run him out of position and then come in. He's done it all the time. Muster just likes to stand there and put his two feet down heavily and slog. And Henman won't let him do it. Well, Muster tried three lobs in that passage of play, and he did have the wind at his back. It was almost impossible to get that ball to come up and down in such a short time with the wind at his back. So tactically, not a good tiebreaker from Muster. Henman continuing to do all the right things, not changing a winning game. Muster had said that uh, the balls here fluff up quite quickly after two or three games, and uh, that one would assume if it was true, it would be in his favour. Slower ball. 4-2. Still got this beautiful rhythm. The number of first serves he's been getting in. Right from the start, he's had Five, that rhythm in his serve. There seems to be a problem here, so I'll try and remember what it was like to do sound commentary for all those years ago. He's like a storm just about to happen. Panic over. 30, 15. <laughs> 
Still the rhythm of the serve. Must be a beautiful feeling. And the crispness on the volley. And the immovable spirit. No panic, no excitement. And he's at the net. Henman going great guns here. Two sets to love and one love. Well, it's one thing to have a game plan. It's another 15, thing to 15. execute. And Tim Henman in what is pretty difficult condition.